I want to start this video off by asking a couple of questions. First, why were chainsaws invented? Well, the answer to that is quite easy, because they allow us to cut more wood quickly. Well, then the next question is, why aren't we all carrying chainsaws when we go to the woods? Again, the answer is pretty obvious. Size, weight, and to some degree, noise. Then why not something like this, the Saker Mini Electric Chainsaw? Well, I think most people would say, do they even work? Well, let me share my experiences with you. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, before we get started, I just want to thank Saker for sending out their mini chainsaw so that I could share it with you. So, you know, th this type of saw has been on my radar for some time. I've wondered if it actually has application for use out in the woods. And here's my thinking. It may not be something that I'll carry very often when I go to the woods, but I think there is a time and a place for a saw like this. Number one, maybe car camping, because that allows you to carry bigger items than you may in your backpack, especially if you're hiking. And maybe for people who just can't operate a hand-powered saw easily. So someone that has some mobility issues may find that this allows them to process wood. So with that thinking in mind, when Saker offered to send me this saw, I wanted to test it out and see if it would actually work in that role. Well, that's what I want to do in this video. I want to share my experiences with it. But what we'll do to start is we'll go down to the tabletop. We'll go over the saw in a little bit of detail. I'm going to share all its key features as well as, of course, what it came with. And then we'll get outside and do some demonstrations. So just before we get into specifics on the saw itself, there is quite a bit that came along with this. And I may as well share that with you now and then we'll get back to the saw. So to start with... It came in this hard plastic carrying case. And you know, my first thought was this reminded me of something that was a, a power tool that you might get at a hardware store. And really, that's what it is. It's a small power tool. Everything is compacted in this case for carrying. Nice case. I don't know that this is a case I would take with me to the woods, but everything's there if I wanted to go car camping to ensure I had it all. It's all in one place. So let's go through the contents of it. To start with, besides the saw, they did include two of these 20 volt lithium ion batteries. I'll talk more to the batteries in a moment. I'm just going to replace everything back into the case as I go through it. And this is the charging cable that will allow you to keep those batteries charged up. Besides the chain that is on the saw itself, two spare chains. I thought that was kind of cool. And by the way, these are real chainsaw chains, and they can be sharpened with a regular chainsaw file as well. A bit of safety equipment. Um, the glasses, absolutely. They're, they're just simple plastic glasses, but they do fit on, and they actually fit on over my reading glasses that you know sometimes you may need to wear. I don't think much of the gloves, quite honest. They're, they're very soft little nylon gloves. They're quite stretchy and will, well, they don't fit my hands, but they'll fit a lot of people's hands. But the only, they're not offering protection so much as grip because they're covered in the little rubber or silicone dots or something. So yeah, maybe there is some benefits there. It may stop you from getting a splinter. Although, be honest, I think leather gloves would do a better job than that. But at least there's something and it's nice that they include it. A couple of more items. Tiny little screwdriver and a wrench for adjusting the chain on the bar. And one last thing, and this is no small thing, although it didn't last very long, is a lubricating oil for the chain. You really need to be applying that. And there's lots of, oh, there is one more thing, of course. All important manual and warranty information. And it does have quite a bit of good information. And I really do recommend, regardless of your experience with a chainsaw, I do recommend that you take a look at the manual before you start using the saw. I think there's some really helpful hints. All right, see if I can get that out of the way and bring the saw back in. It is a little bigger than a lot of the things I tabletop review, so I will make, try to make sure it's all going to stay in frame. So a couple of things right off at the top. The weight, 2 pounds, 10 ounces, which is 1.186 kilograms. So not ultralight, but it's a power tool. So it's, uh, you know, it's within that range of uh, tool weights, we'll say. Bar length. It is a six inch bar length at, or, hundred and, uh, or 15 centimeters. Sorry, I was going to say 150 millimeters, same difference. Six inch uh, bar length on it. 
which I thought at first is going to be really, really small, but it actually works out to be the proper bar length given the power of the motor and the mission that you're going to be using this for. And the overall length, if you take it from the end of the chain with the battery installed, is 15.7 inches or 400 milliliters. All right, the only other thing that I can add to this before we get outside is the performance specifications. And this is from the manual, but it rates it as at a 780 RPM running off a 20 volt DC lithium ion battery. So, okay, those are the specs, but what's more important, of course, is just how well does it work? So let's get outside and do some demonstrations. All right, just before we go looking for some trees to cut down and some wood to cut up, I thought I'd give you some close-ups of the saw itself. So to begin with, the cover that I have over it is something I made myself, not for this saw. In fact, it's something I made for a water bottle at one time, but I was looking for something to cover the chain up so that I could take it in the wood without having to carry that complete folding little briefcase and still protect me and my pack against the chain. Remember, this is a real chainsaw chain. It's maybe a little smaller, but it is a real chainsaw chain, so those edges are very sharp. All right, let's do a few close ups. First off, the bar on the chain, as you can see. Six or 15 centimeters, six inches. The retractable spring-loaded uh, cover over the chain just helps from all the chips that are gonna be flying up in the air. They don't really fly up in the air with that, of course, that's what the whole point of it is. And it lifts as you cut into the wood, all right? So, motor. Uh, this is of use to know. These little grips do help to hold on sometimes, not always, help to hold on to the piece of wood. If you're trying to get a little extra control, you can move right into the log, and that will help to hold on as you move the saw down. There is a knuckle guard, uh, best way to describe it. It's not especially strong, it's not especially big, but it's big enough to do what it's supposed to do, of course. The primary trigger here, but you can see it's locked out until it press the safety. And then when I press both, then I force the chainsaw will operate. The grip, rubber over mold, quite comfortable to hold in hand. And of course the, if I can get it off, removable battery. Let me just show you the battery for a second. So it's a 20 volt lithium ion battery, and it is uh, marked with the Saker name on it. Um, 1.5 amp hours. That's what it's rated to have. Now there is a little battery status light here. Just a point that I want to make right now is when I first got the unit, I figured that uh, I would be charging them up before using it. But when I checked the batteries, they were showing full power. However, first time I went out and used it, uh, the saw did not last all that, or the batteries did not last all that long. So I thought I was going to be a little bit disappointed. So I brought them in and I charged the two batteries up and then they lasted much longer. So just a word of something to be aware of. If you get the saw, um, you may want to use it the first time, run the batteries down and then leave them and charge them fully and you'll get a much longer life out of them. And like most power tools, it snaps on just nicely. All right, that's all there is to it. Let's go looking for something to cut. All right, so what we have here is a typical cluster of red maple trees. And as is usual in, with red maples, when they cluster like this, you're gonna get a couple of really strong, healthy ones. And then you're gonna get a few that uh, give up uh, because they just can't compete with the larger ones. So that's what we have here. The one behind is well dead. I may take that down. I'm not gonna take it down today, but it is so well dead. The bark is coming off. It's likely quite wet. It's a good size. The larger ones are about five inches, four inches. There's another one that is still healthy for now, but I don't see it lasting much longer. That's about three inches. But the one I'm going to cut is a little under two inches right down here. It's two inches. It's got to be 20 feet tall and it is dead. Not long dead, but it is dead just the same. So the majority of the wood that I have cut to now has been in between three inches and four inches in diameter and probably, oh, let's see, 12, 13 pieces of wood each eight, seven, eight feet long, cut into lengths about uh, a foot to 13 inches, firewood lengths. So that's all been done at home in my backyard. This one I'm gonna take down and uh, 
I don't have to do any special cutting maneuvers because I can see it's a lightweight tree and I'm just going to take it off right here. And I will be giving you some close-ups of the cutting action in, uh, in a moment when I bring it over to my bench. So let's just get started and get this one out of the way. And that's all there is to that. All right, I'm going to bring this over to the bench. I'm going to take the top limbs off and then we'll start cutting this to, to length. All right, I have that maple laid across my sitting bench here. I'm just going to uh, cut a few pieces off. Now, well, you know, I'll, I'll go through the whole thing. I just won't necessarily record the whole thing. I'm going to take them off in 12, 13 inch pieces. And uh, yeah, let's just get started. All right, a little effort there at all, right? Nice and dry. The outside is wet. We've had quite a lot of rain in the last day or two, so the outside is wet, but the inside is dry. Now, just to, I'll point this out. It's not happening, but I'll point this out that I have gotten into some much thicker wood. I wanted to see how big I could get, and I went into a piece about five inches in diameter, and uh, I was starting to bear down a little bit, something you don't need to do with a saw like this. But as I got to the center, the saw, the saw stopped. And I thought it was jammed. It wasn't jammed, but it's almost like there's an auto shutoff. If it jams or stops, I just lift it out. I rolled the log a little bit and kept on going without any problem whatsoever. It didn't have no impact on the saw at all. Yep, that's uh, pretty easy work, wasn't it? I think there's another big piece of wood here that I want to try it on. And uh, yeah, it's a big piece of pine branch that came down in a recent windstorm. Let's see how it works on that. All right, I'm standing under a nice big eastern white pine tree and a recent windstorm, as pines will do. It dropped one of its lower hanging dead branches. So dead, dry, not on the outside so much, but dry on the inside. And five inches in diameter. That's going to be a test for this. Now, uh, let me just take this little piece off right here. Just so we have a clear path of work. Make sure nothing's going to hang us up or fly up at me. Um, I have my doubts about this. One, because of the size. It's well dead, so it should be dry, but just the same. Pine is very resinous wood, so I... Not sure how well it will do on this, but I guess there's only one way to find out. So let's give it a try. So I'm going to take it off at about here. Let's give it a shot and see what happens. I, you probably saw, yeah, it's still... Good piece of pine. You probably saw that twice the saw did stop uh, and just halt it. So I just lifted the blade up a little bit and that was all it needed to free it up and continue cutting. So yeah, it's still a little wet inside so it's not that old. So uh, I'm probably going to cut this up because this makes great firewood at least to start. It's not great cooking wood but it does create nice early firewood. All right, a few more comments on the Saker mini chainsaw before we close this video out. So there's a few things that occur to me and I know people are thinking, but Mark, it is a battery operated device. That means you have to have a means of recharging the batteries and you're absolutely right. Well, first let's take it back to its intended mission. Yes, I did take it to the woods for demonstration purposes to show what it could do if you took it with you camping. But the reality is I'm not gonna take this very often and out into the woods where I go because of its weight and size and that type of thing, I'll probably continue to take a silky saw or a bow saw of time, some type with me. Having said that though, it did make the work of cutting up the smaller firewood into pieces that were manageable to a fire. Again, it won't handle really big pieces of wood, but the smaller pieces, it makes it so much easier to process it. So if you consider where you're likely going to use this, which is car camping, uh, camping at places where you uh, need, where you have access to power to recharge your batteries, maybe a camp at, you know, out in the woods somewhere where you have power or solar power or power banks or something that you can recharge with. I think it still has a use in those, in those situations, especially if you are somewhat challenged from a mobility standpoint. Now, um, be honest, I'm getting a little older. I have quite severe arthritis in both of my shoulders. 
I can still use the saw fairly effectively, but it's becoming harder to use an axe. And not that I can't use it, I have enough mobility, but I usually pay for it the next day in a lot of shoulder pain. So if I can ease the work on my shoulders, then I'm going to, of course, so that I can better enjoy my time in the woods. Well, if you're a little bit more advanced than I am and uh, you don't like operating a handsaw, yeah, maybe this really does have a role to play for you. The other role, of course, is around the house or around the cottage or a campsite where you have a lot of small pieces of wood that you want to break down into either firewood or scrap for, for uh, disposal some other way. Yeah, this really still does operate. It's an alternative to a larger gas-operated chainsaw. It may not be a reasonable alternative to a larger battery-operated chainsaw, but it's not bad. It's reasonable for the smaller jobs. The larger battery-operated chainsaws will have a little bit more power, but then we're getting back into the issue of size and weight and the need to recharge those just like you have to recharge this. So just think about where this might be appropriate and uh, then you'll, you'll, that'll help you decide if it's something you want to use. Now, here's the other thing. I honestly wasn't expecting this to work as well as it did. It looked a bit like a toy, to be quite honest, but it's not. It is a real tool, and it had real power, and it had durability well beyond what I expected of it. Now, I've used it a fair amount, as I talked about, but that doesn't mean I've used it for a year or so to see if it's going to last over the long term. Uh, I guess what I can say to that is I will continue to use this, not every time I go out into the woods, but on occasion and again when I go car camping. And if I find that it just doesn't last, I can always do a follow-up video for you on that. But uh, okay, I think we've talked long enough about this chainsaw, what's its proper use, where to use Use it, what its limitations are. Um, what I'll, I'll do, of course, is put all the information I have in the video description below, but I'd invite you at this time, if you have any comments or questions about this chainsaw or any other small chainsaw for that matter, then please put those in the comments section. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.